thank you so much, Aruk, for this kind introduction. I can't uh, see you, unfortunately, but I, I could hear the nice introduction. And uh, of course, thanks uh, to the SSBMT and uh, EBMT as well for giving me the opportunity to uh, talk about novel therapies for GVHD. Hope to see you next time uh, all in person. Um, I don't have any relevant disclosures for uh, this talk, uh, and uh, I will actually focus uh, on novel therapies in steroid refractory graft versus host disease, of course, as uh, we know that uh, first-line treatment hasn't changed for decades. And this is the roadmap uh, of my talk. I will talk about acute and then about chronic GVHD. First, uh, in each of the topic, I will uh, focus on the endpoints in clinical trials, uh, drugs that we have approved uh, today, and then uh, highlights from uh, EBMT, and then uh, give you some of the new uh, perspectives and potential new drugs um, as a relation to what we today know uh, about uh, bi biology of GVHD uh, as well. So let me start uh, with acute GVHD. Uh, when it comes to uh, clinical endpoints uh, in acute uh, GVHD, well, we of course know that uh, steroid refractory acute GVHD is an unmet clinical uh, need, uh, especially knowing that uh, six months survival uh, in this entity is 50% and that less than one third of patients survive uh, beyond two years. Uh, and uh, um, for some times we've been doing clinical trials in this setting and it is very important to well-defined clinical uh, endpoints in this setting. Uh, from 2014 uh, and this nice study from Inamoto and colleagues uh, in Hematologica, we know that uh, the use uh, of complete or very good partial response at day 28 uh, as is an appropriate short-term primary uh, endpoint and this is because uh, when we separate uh, partial remission from very good partial uh, uh, response, uh, then we can see uh, the difference in treatment uh, failure, as you can see uh, here uh, and uh, in, in the left, uh, although there is no difference in chronic GVHD and non-relapse mortality. And this uh, also corresponds to six uh, months uh, outcomes, and therefore um, this uh, is an appropriate uh, endpoint uh, for acute GVHD starting at the date 28. Uh, and this is before chronic GVHD develops. And uh, th this exactly was the clinical uh, endpoint for the first um, study that I want to mention in this setting. And that uh, led to approval of ruxolitinib uh, in steroid uh, refractory acute GVHD. Uh, that was already uh, two years ago. Um, and and uh, was a consequence of an open label phase two multicenter study. Which one? Which uh, evaluated it in 71 patients in a dosage of twice uh, five milligrams per day, and uh, day 28 overall response here was 54.9 percent, separated into complete uh, and partial remissions, as stated here, and the overall response at any time was 73 percent. This was primary endpoint, and secondary endpoint was a response duration, a median response duration. Was was three, four, uh, five days at uh, six uh, months. And what is clinically also relevant, median time to respond was seven days and majority of patients responded until day 14, uh, making responders uh, survive uh, much better. Uh, when it comes to safety, we today know uh, that uh, ruxolitinib um, leads to uh, cytopenias, to uh, infections. Uh, in this uh, study, uh, infections occurred in 80% of patients and they were mostly uh, CMV uh, reactivations. Um, so uh, this was an FDA uh, uh, approval, uh, and then this paved the way for a second study, which we also uh, are familiar with, which is a REACH-2 study, uh, phase three, open-label multicenter study, which randomized ruxolitinib versus best available uh, therapy, this time uh, in a dose of two, uh, twice 10 milligrams uh, a day in 309 patients. Primary endpoint here was again overall response at day 28, uh, while key secondary uh, endpoint uh, was uh, the response at day uh, 56. And uh, this is a study that uh, ended uh, uh, also in approval uh, uh, of ruxolitinib in this setting by EMA, which happened actually very uh, recently. Uh, and uh, 
in more details, uh, the study uh, reached uh, its primary uh, and key secondary uh, endpoint, as ruxolitinib uh, was significantly better uh, than best available therapy, 62 uh, in comparison to 39%, uh, and uh, day uh, 56, uh, 40 uh, in comparison to 22%. Uh, most common uh, uh, adverse events uh, I already mentioned, so cytopenia, and CMV infection uh, as in reach one uh, as well. Uh, also, uh, what was um, uh, reassuring is that uh, overall response uh, was uh, higher with ruxolitinib in all grades of acute GVHD. Although uh, in this study, we saw a large proportion of partial remissions uh, and organ uh, distribution was not uh, described. But this brings me to a highlight of uh, EBMT, my first highlight of EBMT. Uh, and this is a post hoc analysis which actually evaluated response by organ involvement and was uh, presented uh, at EBMT as an oral uh, presentation by Professor Mohamed Moti, who also um, shared some of his slides with me, so I thank him. Um, and um, what uh, he showed is that overall uh, response um, was here again higher with ruxolitinib regardless of organ involvement, so in gastrointestinal skin and liver uh, irrespectively. Uh, also, an improvement of more than sta uh, one stage from baseline at days 28 and 56 was achieved, again by a great proportion, greater proportion of patients in the ruxolitinib uh, versus best available therapy in gastrointestinal, but also in liver uh, and uh, in skin, which in conclusion... Uh, make, uh, makes us uh, believe that patients with steroid refractory uh, acute GVHD respond better to ruxolitinib compared to best available uh, therapy, regardless of organ involvement uh, or uh, grade. Um, this brings me uh, to uh, some of the perspectives in acute GVHD. I think we are all familiar with this uh, sketch uh, and three phases of uh, acute GVHD. So host uh, antigen presenting cells activation, donor T cell activation, and final cell cellular and inflammatory effectors activation. And most uh, drugs that we use today uh, target these two uh, phases. But what we have learned uh, in recent time uh, is uh, that uh, is the importance of uh, the first phase and of the microbiota, because disrupted microbiota has been shown uh, to be related uh, with uh, worsened uh, outcomes of allogeneic stem cell transplantation and graft versus host disease as well. Uh, and therefore, it becomes interesting to uh, try to modulate microbiota uh, as well instead of um, uh, having more and more new uh, drugs because this, uh, of course, uh, can be uh, more simple. Um, it can be done with diet, with prebiotics, with probiotics, and ultimate probiotics here uh, is uh, something called fecal microbiota transplantation, which I think you are all familiar with. Uh, and uh, fecal microbiota transplantation has been shown to be successful in retrospective cases and case series in refractory graft versus host disease, and it works by uh, restoring microbial homeostasis, by increasing diversity, eradicates multidrug resistant uh, bacteria, uh, and then helps restores, uh, restore barrier integrity and uh, immune homeostasis. Uh, this is how uh, fecal micro biota transplantation works uh, and with um, success uh, in uh, first uh, studies, uh, it has com come to uh, phase two clinical trials. And this is another highlight from EBMT that I wanted to mention. And this is for the first time uh, clinical trial of fecal microbiota uh, transplantation, which was uh, shown um, by Dr. Flo uh, Malart, uh, who uh, showed it uh, in uh, the oral session for GVHD. Uh, and is, this is uh, actually a pooled allogeneic fecal microbiota transplant uh, product and enema, uh, which uh, is giving, uh, which uh, is given uh, uh, consecutively uh, in patients uh, who uh, are uh, adults eight, uh, 18 years and older, and who developed a first episode uh, of stage three or four gastrointestinal acute GVG, that is steroid refractory, and importantly, that could tolerate 12 hours uh, of 
of cessation of systemic antibiotics to allow uh, FMT, which is, of course, not always possible. So pretty strict eligibility criteria uh, to be included in this trial. However, uh, this uh, also included an expanded access programs for, uh, program for all the patients that could not be uh, included in clinical uh, trial, so patients with any grade of uh, GVHD and any line of previous uh, therapy, which in uh, total led to 24 patients included in the trial and uh, in the extended program, uh, more 55, 52 more patients. Um, they all had three or four uh, acute uh, graft versus host disease. Median lines of previous tr uh, treatment in, uh, in the trial was three. Uh, most of those patients have uh, been refractory to ruxolitinib uh, before, and the median number of procedures was uh, also three. Uh, the primary um, uh, endpoint was uh, the GVHD response again, uh, again uh, at day 28. And in the Heracles trial, this uh, led to 37% to, uh, of uh, response, partial remission, complete response, and very good partial remission together, and even more in the expand, uh, extended uh, program of 58%, uh, while best uh, responses were even higher uh, in uh, both uh, Heracles and in the extended uh, program uh, as well. When it comes to overall survival, uh, at six months, it was 29 and 20 25 as 12 months in the trial and 49% and 38% uh, in the extended program at the same time points uh, with um, significantly better survival uh, in patients who achieved response uh, in comparison to the ones uh, who didn't. Uh, when it comes to uh, adverse events um, in, the, in the Heracles trial, uh, the most significant four of them uh, could not be, uh, re especially the Escherichia coli sepsis, could not be uh, re rela related to fecal microbiota transplantation. Well, of course, that was not uh, so easy to analyze in the extended program where infectious complications um, attributed to uh, 12%. Uh, uh, and uh, these infectious complications could not uh, be uh, completely uh, um, uh, uh, separated from uh, from the fecal microbiota uh, transplantation, but with no uh, no fat, fat, fatal outcomes. Uh, also, um, the FMT uh, um, led to um, increased uh, alpha uh, diversity in responding uh, patients, and all this paved the way for a phase three trial that is starting uh, right now for FMT as a third line uh, agent after steroids and. And, uh, ruxolitinib. So we are happy, we will be happy to, to see the results of this uh, trial as well. This brings me to chronic GVHD and I will uh, follow the same uh, roadmap. When it uh, comes to steroid uh, refractory chronic GVHD, also an unmet clinical uh, need, uh, especially knowing that less than 20% of patients achieve durable uh, partial or complete responses and survive one year after initial therapy without the need of additional systemic therapy. We know that trials in chronic GVHD were not so uh, easy uh, to handle, but with the help of the NIH consensus conference and better definition of endpoints as uh, failure-free survival, uh, the, this field has uh, moved forward uh, significantly. Uh, and uh, um, failure-free survival is a composite um, endpoint uh, which includes uh, treatment change, non-relapse mortality, and recurrent malignancy, and uh, is uh, a meaningful uh, endpoint for clinical trials in, trials in chronic GVHD. This has uh, been uh, also shown almost 10 years uh, ago, uh, and analysis of failure-free survival in those studies shown that um, after second-line uh, treatment, um, failure-free survival is 56% at six months, and then the Increases to 25% uh, at four years, while withdrawal of immunosuppression uh, happens in only 15% uh, at four uh, years. Uh, 
Um, this paved the way for clinical trials in chronic GVHD. We all know that ibrutinib was the first drug approved uh, and until uh, 2021, the only one. Uh, the approval happened after a phase 1b to 2 open label study uh, in patients who failed one to three previous lines of therapy. And primary endpoint here was overall response, um, again, 67%, uh, while secondary uh, endpoint was a sustained response, which occurred in 71% uh, by week 20. This was the first, uh, first uh, analysis with a median follow-up of 14 months. Later on, we got a prolonged median uh, follow-up of 26 months. Uh, and uh, this analysis showed similar uh, overall response of 69%. Uh, and uh, um, failure-free uh, survival, uh, 51% uh, versus uh, historic uh, benchmark of 30, uh, 35%. Um, so uh, the main problem with uh, ibrutinib, uh, although it looked very promising, is the high rate of discontinuation uh, rate due to side effects, which is almost 43%, and this is what we see in clinical practice as well, uh, has many toxicities, uh, most frequent are fatigue, diarrhea, muscle spasms, nausea, tendency to bruise, but most importantly infectious, especially pneumonia, and especially aspergillosis in retrospective uh, reports, which uh, makes us cautious uh, when uh, using it. Um, what I wanted to highlight here from EBMT uh, is uh, that uh, we saw some news on inbrutinib in pediatric setting. Um, Dr. Uh, Zeka has uh, shown us the results of a multicenter phase 1-2 study in pediatric patients with moderate severe chronic GVHD steroid refractory and also uh, uh, older pediatric patients uh, in uh, patients with uh, GVH, chronic GVHD de novo. Uh, this was also phase one, so a dose finding uh, study and the primary endpoint was pharmacokinetics and safety. And therefore, uh, it was uh, found that uh, these are the dosages uh, in uh, patients uh, in relation to their age. Uh, and uh, study at the end included 12 treatment naive patients and 47 relapsed refractory, uh, while second um, secondary uh, endpoint were uh, responses, uh, overall survival and duration of uh, responses. Um, here, uh, an overall response rate was 78% in all patients, higher, of course, in treatment naive. Uh, the median duration of response uh, was not uh, achieved. Achieved, and overall survivals were really uh, high in both groups of patients, uh, making us also uh, trust that ibrutinib is safe and effective in uh, children, what is very, uh, very important. Um, when it comes to uh, adverse events, most uh, frequent ones were abdominal pain, diarrhea, uh, and uh, fever, but all in all, uh, toxicity was acceptable. Uh, this brings me to uh, novelties in steroid refractory uh, chronic GVHD setting in terms of two new drugs that we have from last year, uh, and these are ruxolitinib and belomostudil. Uh, ruxolitinib uh, has been approved by FDA uh, as a consequence of a REACH-3 randomized trial, which uh, compared ruxolitinib, again, twice 10 milligrams per day to best available therapy, uh, which was a choice of 10 different uh, different common choices in this setting and uh, evaluated this approach in uh, patients with moderate severe GVHD uh, older than uh, 12 uh, years. Primary endpoint was overall response at week 24, which showed uh, that uh, ruxolitinib does significantly better than best available therapy, 49 uh, to 25%. Uh, while best overall response is even better, a crossover was also allowed uh, and uh, even patients who had best available therapy had very good response of 79% and almost 70% of patients maintained response uh, at uh, 12 months. Uh, when it comes to um, 
secondary uh, endpoints. These were failure-free survival and uh, symptom response on the least scale. Again, significantly better for the ruxolitinib uh, arm uh, and uh, significantly uh, higher symptom response on the least scale for uh, the ruxolitinib arm as well, which all led by, uh, to the approval of this drug in, uh, by FDA uh, in September 2021. Um, when it comes to adverse events, um, we know already uh, side effects related to ruxolitinib. Again, more cytopenias, more fever, hypertension, CMV reactivation, and elevations of creatinine and ALT uh, in the ruxolitinib arm. Uh, although grade 3 infection was similar in two uh, groups, uh, and uh, adverse events led to discontinuation uh, of uh, ruxolitinib in 16.4% uh, uh, of patients. Last but not the least, a very exciting drug, uh, velomucidil, which is a ROC2 um, inhibitor, uh, which works in different um, uh, actions uh, that, uh, as opposed to what we are used to. So it doesn't only shift the Th17 to Treg cell balance toward Treg cells, but it also uh, seems to reduce fibrosis uh, by downregulating TGF. Uh, uh, beta signaling and profibrotic gene expression, which is really important because we didn't have drugs that work in fibrosis uh, so far. And this drug uh, was uh, approved uh, following two studies, um, phase 2a study in 45 patients, which was a dose finding study evaluated three different approaches in uh, patients uh, who had uh, one or three uh, to three lines of previous therapies uh, and was um, uh, was uh, followed by a phase two study in uh, 132 patients with 200 milligrams once or twice daily uh, in uh, even more heavily pretreated patients after two to five lines of previous therapy all responses were great over 60 and over 70 uh, percent and in Importantly, uh, were high uh, in uh, patients who had severe forms of GVHD, um, many prior lines of therapy, many organs involved. And also in the second study, which is a, a called a Rockstar study, uh, patients who had uh, previously ibrutinib and ruxolitinib also responded uh, above 70%, and that was more than half of these, uh, of these patients. Um, when it uh, comes to different organs, responses were seen across all organs in both studies. Um, in uh, gastrointestinal, we saw many complete remissions, but also uh, in hard to treat entities as joints and, and fascia, also lung GVHD, uh, and uh, median time to response was five uh, weeks. And most of the responses were seen in the first six months. And this all led to FDA approval of this, and that's the third drug for the chronic G, uh, refractory chronic GVHD, uh, and this happened last in uh, in July uh, 2021. Uh, the analysis, pooled analysis of these two uh, studies showed us the failure-free survival rates uh, as well. And uh, that was 75% at six months, 54 at 12 months, and 38 at 24 months, which compared favorably to the historic ones that I've shown you, so 56, 45, and 31 at 24 months. Uh, also, uh, risk factors uh, for treatment failure were... Uh, uh, were defined uh, by the multivariate analysis, and these were progressive onset of chronic GVHD, steroid-free upfront therapy, and more than two previous uh, lines uh, of therapy. Uh, tox uh, the toxicities were present, but uh, in comparison uh, to ruxolitinib, uh, much less cytopenias, uh, also less uh, infection, so belomucidil uh, is a pretty safe drug from what we know. And today, having all these three agents we will uh, hopefully we will have to choose uh, from them uh, in the future uh, and uh, it becomes easier when we have direct comparisons uh, of their efficacies toxicities um, and um, and uh, of course 
uh, taking in, into consideration the biology of GVHD uh, as well. So is it uh, inflammatory or is it fibrotic GVHD? All this uh, can help us individualize treatments uh, in the future, maybe even in combination treatments as well. Uh, and uh, this uh, brings me uh, to, uh, to the uh, finale of, uh, of my talk, uh, because I wanted to mention that we also learned a lot about chronic GVHD pathogenesis in recent times. We know that also it happens in uh, three phases, and most of the drugs have been preventing uh, targeting B cell and T cell priming. And it becomes really uh, interesting to target actually phase three in chronic GVHD, which is uh, fibrosis. This is what belamucidil does, but this is also uh, what some new drugs are doing. Uh, and I wanted to mention an anti-fibrotic uh, uh, drug, uh, which we recently saw first results of a phase one to study, oxatilimab. Uh, which uh, actually interferes with macrophage-driven fibrosis, so a very unique uh, model of uh, activity. And uh, we saw uh, results of uh, patients uh, older than six years without the chronic, active chronic GVHD who had at least two prior lines of systemic therapy, 40 patients in total uh, who had prior uh, all these treatments who were pre-treated with median prior lines for uh, 3.2 uh, years and median organs with GVHD4, but still impressive responses of 68% and complete remission across uh, organs, including sclerosis. Uh, as well as improvement in quality of life uh, and uh, well-tolerated uh, drugs and uh, drug, uh, and we are very excited to see what the future brings for, for uh, this drug as well. So with this, uh, I think um, I can conclude uh, and um, I will be happy to take your questions. Thank you.